Warning, the following video contains rude language. Make sure you can cope with it. Have you sent your kids out of the room? Very well, we can start. This group of Cossacks here seems to have a lot of fun. But we want to laugh with them, so let's find out what is so funny. The surprising answer is that they just received a letter from the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed IV. We better have a look at the message, since letters by an Ottoman Sultan usually are no laughing matter. It reads as follows. I the Sultan, son of Mohammed, brother of the sun and moon, grandson and vice-regent of God, sovereign of all kingdoms, of Macedonia, Babylonia and Jerusalem, of Upper and Lower Egypt, King of Kings, ruler of all that exists, extraordinary invincible knight, constant guardian of the grave of Jesus Christ, trustee of God himself, hope and comfort of Muslims, confusion and great protector of Christians, command you, the Saporosian Cossacks, to surrender to me voluntarily and without any kind of resistance, and don't permit yourself to trouble me with your attacks. As we expected, the Sultan's narcissistic command is no laughing matter indeed. I mean, this guy calls himself Confusion of Christians. This tells us a lot about his mental state. But what was his problem anyway? As you could have guessed, the Ottoman Empire and its vassal, the Crimean Khanate, were at odds with the Cossacks. But this was nothing special. The Cossacks lived in an area with the Ottomans to the south, Poland, Lithuania to the northwest and the Muscovites to the northeast. Whenever they did not play one opponent against the other, they were at odds with everyone. Between 1672 and 1676, the Ottomans fought a war against Poland-Lithuania under Jan Sobieski. The Ottoman troops were regularly attacked by the Saporosian Cossacks under Ivan Sirko, who used the chance to plunder supplies for themselves. It became such a nuisance that Sultan Mehmed IV sent 15,000 Janissaries. Their task was to execute a surprise attack on a Cossack sick at Hortomluk during the night after Christmas. The Janissaries managed to infiltrate the sick during night, but were discovered by accident, although the Cossacks probably were very drunk. Thousands of the Ottoman soldiers died in the musket fire pouring out of the Cossacks' huts. With this attack, the Ottomans had stung in the hornet's nest. The angered and emboldened Cossacks decided to retaliate and gathered their forces. In July 1675, the Cossack forces started an incursion into the Crimea. They bypassed the fortress of Perikop, which guarded the access to the Crimea and pillaged the hinterland. On the Cossacks' retreat, the Tartars came out of the fortress and ambushed them, only to learn to their dismay that the Cossack rearguard lay in reserve. The Tartar army was annihilated. At this point, Sultan Mehmed IV had it. He wrote the letter we have just read. However, he did not take into account the Cossacks' reaction to this friendly and well-mannered proposal. As you probably have guessed, the Cossacks reacted with their own letter, but in their case it was a strongly worded one. You Turkish Satan! Brother and comrade of the damned devil and secretary to Lucifer himself, what the hell kind of knight are you? The devil shits and you and your army swallow it. You aren't fit to have the sons of Christians under you. We aren't afraid of your army and we will fight you on land and sea. You Babylonian busboy, Macedonian mechanic, Jerusalem beer brewer, Alexandrian goatskinner, swineherd of Upper and Lower Egypt, Armenian pig, Tartar goat, Kamenets hangman, Podolian thief, grandson of the evil serpent himself and buffoon of all the world and the netherworld, fool of your god, swine snout, mare's asshole, butcher's dog, unbaptized brow, May the devil steam your ass! That's how the Cossacks answer you, you nasty glob of spit. You are unfit to rule true Christians. We don't know the date because we don't have a calendar. The moon is in the sky and the year is in a book. And the day is the same with us as with you. So go kiss your butt. Chief Hetman Sakashenko with all the Saborosian host. Such was the answer of the Cossacks. Of course, there are many different translations. The original version, if it ever existed, is not known. Here is an alternative letter. What the hell kind of knight are you? 
the devil shits and you and your army eat it. You Alexandrian beer brewer, Cossack quiver, Bodolian hangman, Armenian pig, swine snout, mare's asshole, butcher's dog. You're not fit to command the sons of Christians. We'll fight you on land and sea, unbaptized brow, fuck your mother. We don't know the date, we don't have a calendar, but the day with us is the same as with you. Kiss your ass. The main difference is that this version is shorter, does not have the multitude of insults, but on the other hand, the no-no words are a little bit stronger. If you happen to wonder who Mehmet the fourth mother was, her name was Turhan Sultan, probably of Russian origin. There was no reaction that can be attributed directly to the war of words. Probably the Sultan was too deep in a shock about such an abusive use of words and retreated to his safe space. We should take time to give credit to whoever thought of this letter. This is not just an uncreative ordering of insults. It follows the pattern provided by the Sultan, who named all his titles. Every title and claim has a corresponding insult in the Cossack's answer. And mixed under this high form of art is a list of random insults. Before we continue, we should take a moment to honor the great painting depicting the Cossacks producing the letter. I am not very deep into the history of arts, so we are going to touch this painting only slightly. It is called Reply of the Saporosian Cossacks and was painted by Ilya Repin. It took him from 1880 to 1891. Not a wonder for a picture of 2.3 meter by 3.58 meter in size. This guy in the middle is meant to portray Ivan Sirko. The elderly jolly Cossack should be Taras Bulba. Every man in this picture is modeled after a real life figure known to Repin. There remains the question if the Cossack's reply is fake or fiction. Yes, I said fake or fiction. The chances that the Cossacks ever wrote this letter are very low indeed. Perhaps the most famous forgery in Ukrainian history, a fake with a long and vibrant history, is the apocryphal letter of Saporosian Cossacks to the Turkish Sultan. The text has undergone numerous translations and rewritings. The most famous are its translations into French and German, which helped make it accessible to the European readers. Pilipenko already hints that fake or not, the latter has value. Friedman elaborates more on this. The fact that the correspondence is in all likelihood apocryphal does not reduce its value. Apocrypha constitute an important and amusing factor in history. The apocryphal story is no less amusing whether true or false, and it is of historical value since it accurately reflects the attitude of some people. The latter had great impact on Russian historical and political consciousness until the 19th century. In the 1870s, the letters were used as anti-Turkish propaganda in the Russia-Ottoman Balkan Wars. Making fun of a dangerous power gave the Cossacks a psychological source of resistance. There was a certain historical character who enjoyed a good laugh and valued this picture enormously. There was also a framed reproduction of Rapin's famous Reply of the Saporosian Cossacks to the Sultan in the main room. My father loved this picture and took great pleasure in reciting the obscene reply itself to anyone who happened to be handy. Who could this father be? Do you recognize the name Svetlana Aliluyeva? She later became known as Lana Peters. Maybe her middle name helps. Yosivovna. She was the daughter of Joseph Stalin and her father loved to recite the Cossack's reply. I wonder which parts Stalin liked most. Can you imagine him shouting, the devil shits and you and your army swallow it to FDR? Or wishing, may the devil steam your ass to Churchill? Did Stalin just love to be rude or was there more depth to his character? Stalin's liking for such works was perhaps a reflection of his own dreams. He sometimes strove, not very successfully, to create a hearty impression on colleagues and so arrays at his dacha were often the scene of womanless dancing. And so we all have learned a lot of abusive words. I hope you creatively put them to good use, for example, whenever you meet the Stalinist. And now it is your turn. Which insults did the Cossacks forget? Go on, fill the comment section with vulgarities. 
Please do not forget to like this video and share it such that everyone has the chance to learn new swear words. Consider subscribing to find out more about historical curiosities. So long, we'll meet again soon. Stay critical, stay curious, stay free.